Which medical problems can cause halos around lights and when do you need to worry about them? Hi, I'm Dr. Sian Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. And today on the ifacts.com channel, we are talking about halos around lights. So this topic is very top of mind for me because I had a young patient that came in who was complaining about intermittent halos around lights. And while this is something older adults do complain about, not infrequently, it's actually not a very common symptom to have in a younger patient. So I really wanted to make this video because it's important to know as a patient, all the different causes of halos around lights. So let's dive in because this is not a symptom you should just ignore there's typically a medical reason behind it. So why do halos around lights even happen? So there's two major buckets that this category falls into. So halos around lights can come from either simple changes on the surface of the eye, or they can be the sign of a serious eye condition that needs pretty quick attention. The way the eye works is that light normally passes through several transparent structures before it reaches the back of the eye or the retina. When these structures are clear, the image that your retina gets is sharp. But when something distorts or clouds the path of the light, the light spreads instead of focusing. That spreading of the light can create the rings and the glow that we call halos. So now it's important to ask the question that what exactly is interfering with the light in your eye that you are getting this symptom? So the first cause of halos around lights is dry eye. Dry eye disease is one of the most common reasons that people see halos. It may sound minor, but unfortunately, when you have an unstable tear film, that is actually enough to interrupt the smooth optical surface that your eye needs to have clear vision. When the tears break apart too quickly on the surface of the eye, light hits a rough surface instead of a smooth surface. And instead of passing directly back to the retina, it starts to scatter. What you then experience as a patient can be halos, glare, and even fluctuating vision. So if you're wondering if your halos are from dry eye, then it's important to know that many people with dry eye will describe their halos as something that comes and goes. But unfortunately, there's another more dangerous condition that can also cause fluctuating halos that we're gonna get into in just a minute. For halos that come from dry eye, you might notice that the halos are worse after spending long hours on a screen or late at night or in very dry conditions. One of the telltale signs that your halos are from dry eye is that you may notice a significant improvement in them after blinking repeatedly and sort of replenishing that tear film. The good news is that even though dry eye halos are bothersome, they're rarely associated with pain or sudden vision loss. So definitely something you want to treat, but it's not an urgent situation like I had had with this patient of mine. Now, the second cause of halos around lights that is also not emergent is one that usually happens in older individuals. This is actually a normal aging change of the lens that is inside your eye, and this is called a cataract. Cataracts develop gradually as you age and the natural lens of your eye becomes cloudy. Again, this is a totally normal change that's associated with getting older. Once that lens starts scattering the light that's passing through it, the halos can get more noticeable. And patients with cataracts may especially complain of halos at night because their pupil is larger at that time. So patients that have halos at night during driving, especially when they're older, may have something called cataracts. Some types of cataracts can cause really, really bright halos, and some types of cataracts like cortical cataracts can actually create streaks or even starburst-like patterns. Luckily, like dry eye, halos from cataracts are not an emergency, but of course, if they are affecting how you are driving, which can put you at danger, it can also put others on the road in danger, it is really something you should address with your eye doctor. Cataract surgery, fortunately, is extremely safe, and it's one of the most common types of surgery performed not just in the United States, but all over the world. Because anyone who lives long enough will eventually get a cataract, 
and that cataract will eventually blur their vision to the point of them needing to have it out. There's many other videos on the channel all about cataracts and cataract surgery, so you can check those out if you're interested. Okay, now let's get into the more problematic causes of halos. And this happens when there is a problem with the cornea, which is a part of the eye that is at the front and it is a clear part of your eye. The cornea is responsible for a lot of the eye's focusing power. If your cornea gets swollen, which we as ophthalmologists called corneal edema, the clarity of the cornea can change because swollen corneal tissue will bend and scatter light more aggressively than if the tissue were to be clear, than if the tissue were to be not swollen the way it's supposed to be. Corneal edema can create halos that are very bright, very large, and in some cases, even rainbow colored. But corneal edema or corneal swelling is not a diagnosis. It is a medical finding that ophthalmologists like myself will see at the slit lamp when we are examining you. And so then we need to decide what are the reasons for having corneal edema. What is causing the cornea to swell? The reason behind corneal swelling matters because some of these causes need urgent attention and treatment. And some conditions are more chronic conditions that can be treated as an outpatient. First, let's talk about a problem called Fuchs dystrophy. In Fuchs endothelial dystrophy, the cells of the cornea that are responsible for bringing fluid out of the cornea so that it doesn't swell, get weak. And this means that fluid is going to build up and then there's going to be swelling in the cornea. People who have Fuchs dystrophy can notice blurry vision, hazy vision, and it may particularly be bad in the morning and improve later as the day goes on. Another cause of corneal swelling can happen in contact lens wearers. In patients who overwear their contact lenses, meaning they wear them for long stretches of time, even when the eye is clearly dry or you're actively feeling discomfort, but you continue to wear the lenses when you probably should be taking them out, or you misuse the lenses, sleep in your lenses, and just wear them for longer periods than they're intended to be worn, it can actually cause corneal swelling. So if you're having symptoms associated with halos, and blurry vision and your contact lens wear, this is something you're gonna wanna get checked out. Contact lens overwear is also a big risk factor for getting corneal infections. So if you're watching this because you have halos and you wear contact, take them out and make an appointment with your eye doctor. Now let's get into the problem that will cause halos that is most concerning to me as an eye doctor. And this is when your eye pressure goes up. And there are two conditions that can cause the eye pressure to rise quickly. The first one that I'm gonna talk about is actually a medical emergency. When your eye's drainage system suddenly closes, the internal pressure of the eye goes up super fast. The pressure actually inside the eye rises so quickly that it causes the cornea to swell quite quickly. This can actually make you see vivid rainbow-like halos, but halos are just one part of this clinical picture. In the case of something called acute angle closure glaucoma, patients also have severe eye pain, nausea, vomiting, usually a headache on the side of the face where the eye is bothering them, and also a sudden drop in vision. The eye typically looks red and the cornea, which is the front part of the eye, can look very cloudy or steamy as we call it. And the pupil, instead of reacting nicely, may just become very still and what we call as mid dilated. When it comes to eye health, there are actually not that many true eye emergencies, but acute angle glaucoma is a true eye emergency. Your optic nerve can suffer permanent damage in just a few hours because the eye pressure goes up so fast and it gets quite high. The difference between acute angle closure glaucoma and mild causes of halos is pretty clear. The onset in acute angle closure glaucoma is very sudden, the symptoms are intense, and the pressure inside the eye is very dangerously high. Patients are very, very uncomfortable. So if you're experiencing this situation, this is not wait until Monday to call your eye doctor. This is go into an emergency room or urgent care right away because waiting on this can lead to permanent vision loss. Now, finally, the other cause of high eye pressure also related to the case that I had earlier this year is a patient who came in with intermittent halos, but they were actually not associated with a really red eye. They had no headache, no pain, no vomiting. So the cause of halos in this situation was from something called pigment dispersion syndrome. Pigment dispersion syndrome 
syndrome is an eye problem that is not very common, but it can happen in younger, nearsighted adults, and it is usually more common in men. Nearsighted means that you have a negative sign in front of your prescription, or you may be something called myopic. So in pigment dispersion syndrome, exactly that is happening. Pigment from the back of the iris is actually getting released inside the eye, and it's starting to deposit in places where it should not be. It can deposit into the cornea. It can also deposit into the drainage system of the eye. When enough pigment clogs the drainage system of the eye, as you can imagine, the fluid that's supposed to exit the eye cannot exit as efficiently and the eye pressure goes up. Now, the strange thing about pigment dispersion syndrome is sometimes the pigment will only release during certain activities. And then this comes with an associated rise in eye pressure. If the eye pressure spike is high enough, your cornea can swell, giving you the halos but you typically will not have the other signs of the eye pressure going up very high, like eye redness or extreme pain, but the eye pressure can still be pretty dangerously high. The eye pressure can go down in between these episodes, so some people may notice more halos after really vigorous exercise or activities that dilate the pupil. Without monitoring, pigment dispersion syndrome can actually lead to something called pigmentary glaucoma, which means that the eye is now losing vision from the high eye pressure. Early detection is really important because then we can treat patients using eye pressure lowering drops or even do something called an SLT laser to help lower the pressure in their eye. There's another video on the channel all about SLT lasers, so you can check that out as well if you're interested. Finally, one other cause of halos that deserves mention is having halos after LASIK surgery or PRK surgery, especially in the early healing period. The cornea needs time to remodel, and so temporary dryness can actually make glare with halos worse. Patients with larger natural pupils can actually notice these effects more so in dim lighting. And also for patients who have had cataract surgery with a multifocal lens, they may also experience some halos in the beginning. The reason that halos can happen with multifocal intraocular lenses is because these lenses are intentionally made to split light so that you can focus at different distances. And while this design overall improves your range of vision, it can also produce rings or glows around bright lights, especially at night. These halos are typically stable and they're not dangerous. So if you have halos and you're watching this video, please make an appointment with your eye doctor Keep track of your symptoms and write down when the halos happen, what you're doing when they happen, and if there's any other associated signs or symptoms, like do you have a headache, do you have eye redness, is there anything else that's going on that you need the doctor to be aware of? These details can help doctors to separate mild causes from dangerous ones. The exam with your eye doctor will then help to confirm what's going on and what is causing your halos. Remember that if halos appear suddenly, especially in just one eye, and they come with pain, redness, nausea, vomiting, that could be a sign of acute angle closure and that's when you need to seek emergency care right away because this could be angle closure glaucoma. If halos develop slowly and affect both eyes and there's no associated pain, the cause is usually less urgent, could be something like cataracts or dry eye, but you should also see your eye doctor very soon. And again, one of the more unusual causes is pigment dispersion syndrome, which can be dangerous, so you also need to go see your eye doctor to make sure you don't have that condition. What questions do you have about your eye health? Drop them below and I will do my best to answer them in a future video. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.